Hi everyone, my name is Stephen Dempsey. Aside from having a powerful set of tools in the photo persona, Affinity Photo also has a robust raw processing engine inside its developed persona. Let's import a raw image and see how it works. You'll notice that Affinity Photo automatically recognizes the raw file and opens it up in the develop persona. Had this been a JPEG, for example, it would have opened instead in the photo persona. The develop persona workspace consists of four distinct zones. The toolbar over here on the left, the document menu on the top, the studios on the right, and the context menus that appear on the bottom when a tool is selected. In this video, we are going to focus on the toolbar, so let's take a closer look. The white balance tool at the bottom allows us to sample something white in our photograph and eliminate any cast that may be present. The colors here already look good to me, but let's just see how the tool interacts with the photo. We can open up the basic studio to get more feedback. I'll click on this pin icon to prevent the panel from closing automatically. Now if I click around, you can see the colors changing, and you can also see the temperature and tint sliders updating their values. The crop tool allows you to recompose and select the part of your image you would like to keep. You can also decide what aspect ratio you prefer. If I choose Custom Ratio from the Mode option and click on the Width and Height, for example, I can choose a 4x3 aspect ratio. There are a number of overlays that can help you with composing your crop. I like the thirds option. If you want the crop to be vertical, you can choose Rotate. I'll stick with the horizontal crop for this image. Straighten will allow you to draw a line from one side of the image to another while following the line of the horizon. It will then rotate the image automatically so that it's perfectly level. In this case, I think it looks fine, so I'll undo that. Darken just means that the areas outside of your crop will be dimmed so that it's easier for you to see what you're doing. You can toggle this on or off. I prefer it on. To apply the crop, double tap the image. There are two different overlay functions in the develop persona. This one is the overlay gradient tool and when I activate and apply it, I essentially have another layer to work with. Now when I go to the basic studio, all the controls pertain to this overlay. We can click on the overlay studio to see these layers. We can also create additional overlays by clicking on these icons up here. The master is the main layer and the one that adjusts the entire photograph. Our new gradient overlay will affect only the area we selected, in this case the sky and mountains. Let's go back to the basic studio with the gradient layer selected and make a few adjustments. My objective here is to make the background more defined. I'll reduce the exposure, adjust the contrast and maybe change the brightness a little and take the highlights down. All these adjustments are only affecting the gradient layer. One thing of note with these overlays is that some tools are not available, such as Clarity. The overlay paint tool also creates its own layer but gives you more flexibility. With this tool, you can paint anywhere you want on the photo. Once again, if we go to the Overlays Studio, we can see the brush overlay layer. When activated, all the tools in the basic studio pertain to this layer. You can decide which layer is active by clicking on it in the Overlays Studio. You can create as many overlays as you wish. One thing to know about these overlays is that when you create them, they remain red until you make an adjustment. Basically, the red color is indicating that you need to do something with your new overlay. So if I move one of these sliders, the red will disappear and now you can see the changes you are making. The Overlay Arrays tool only removes what you've created with the Overlay Paint tool. It will not remove any of the Overlay Gradient layer. 
Make sure you've selected the paint layer, or brush overlay layer as it is called, and then you can selectively erase it. You can adjust the hardness of the eraser here. You can also choose Show Overlay, which is really useful because it can be difficult to see exactly where you've made your adjustment. This overlay is just a visual aid, it's not actually part of the image. At any time you can choose Split to see all the changes you've made in a before and after view, or click again for a side-by-side -side view. Click one more time to return to the full window. Also note that the options Develop and Discard are visible at all times and are not actually part of the tool you are using. Develop will flatten the file and send it to the photo persona for additional work. Do not do this unless you are finished with all of your raw processing. There is no undo button for this. Similarly, if you click on the discard button thinking it is for the tool, it's not. It will close the document and send you back to the home screen. Most importantly, you will receive no warnings for both of these actions. The Blemish Remove tool can get rid of not only facial blemishes, but other elements that are distracting in your shot. I'm not a huge fan of this tool because I think the in-painting tool in the photo persona is faster and easier to use, but know it's there if you need it. The icon with the eye is the red eye removal tool. To use it, just click on it and drag a marquee over each eye. The tool will do the rest for you. There is no apply button for this, so again, be careful not to click on develop or discard. Simply clicking on a different tool will apply and deselect it. When the view tool is activated, you can drag your photo around the screen without moving actual pixels you are only affecting your view. With this tool selected, you can also double click on the image and it will resize to fit the screen. Clicking on the arrow up here will take you back to the home screen without saving any of your changes. You will first be asked if you want to discard your work. So that covers the toolbar. In the next video, I'll talk about the various studios inside the Develop Persona and how to optimize your raw image for later processing in the Photo Persona. I hope this was helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing in general, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.